an emblematic work of Roman civil and religious architecture, the Pantheon, erected between 118 and 125 of our era, under the mandate of Emperor Hadrian. Its construction is attributed to the architect Apollodorus of Damascus. Due to its continuous use, it is one of the best preserved buildings in ancient Rome, a silent witness for two millennia of the constant changes that the immediate environment has undergone. Located on top of two previous temples destroyed by fire, the building was erected in the central part of the campus marshes, following an actual and orthogonal arrangement with respect to the pre-existing constructions. The composition is structured around a guiding axis, which determines the position and the relationship of the elements together and this with the whole of the building. The user gets this harmonic perception from the first image obtained from the outside and manages to maintain this idea when entering the interior of the building. The Pantheon is made up of three main elements, elements that represent pure geometric forms, whose interaction gives rise to the magnificent interior space. The rotunda, made up of a cylindrical wall and topped by a hemispherical dome, the classic portico that configures the access to the interior, and the intermediate body, parallelepiped that articulates the union between both. The portico fulfills the function of the pronouns of a classical temple, as it is framed in front by eight columns. It is of the octastyle type, while four columns delimit each side. It stands on an area of 34 by 15 meters, and being at a higher level than the surrounding piazza. It is accessed by a staircase. The order found in the portico belongs to the Corinthian and has a height of more than 14 meters. The shafts of the columns have a diameter of one and a half meters at the base. On the frieze and on the architrave, various inscriptions can be distinguished in honor of Marcus Agrippa the patron of the original temple. The portico roof structure consists of a gable roof supported by wooden trusses. In the interior of the portico, two rows of four columns divide the space into three naves. The central, wider, leading to the great gateway to the cella or naos. The intermediate body is arranged as a point of articulation between the pronouns and the cella. It is framed by two pilasters attached to the large rotunda. It is a transition space, an extension of the central nave of the portico, which precedes the large volume that will be found in the rotunda. Outside, the structure has the same height as the cylinder of the rotunda. On this body, we find a second pediment, with a height greater than that of the entrance portico. The cornice lines, which run around the outside of the rotunda, marking the sections of the circular wall, continue in this body without a solution of continuity. A discrepancy can be observed in the heights of the two pediments. The journey continues towards the cella, a rotunda of large dimensions, space confined, by a cylindrical wall on which is the great dome. Visualizing the interior section, there is a first level, which runs the perimeter of the cylinder, where seven white exedras with a trapezoidal and semicircular plan open alternately. These are framed by Corinthian columns, which maintains the feeling of continuity in the cylindrical wall and the geometric perception of space. Through these openings, there is a variation of depth levels that originates a plate of light and a marked rhythm of solid and void. An entablature runs along the curved wall, giving the sensation of continuity, only interrupted in the etcedras of the main axis. In a second level, which goes from the entablature to the impost level of the bolt, 
there is a row of windows that belong to an upper gallery. These windows are aligned on a vertical axis with the niches or etc. The Great Dome is the third level of the interior section of the project. It is formed by five rows of coffered ceilings, which decrease in size towards the center of the vault. When approaching the dome's apex, it appears the most impressive element, the Great Oculus. It has a diameter that reaches 9 meters, allows the passage of light and rain alike, but most importantly, it allows the lining created by the movement of the sun. The internal diameter of the rotunda corresponds to the measurement taken from the floor to the oculus, which generates a perfectly hemispherical volume in the interior of the dome. However, the exterior proportions of the rotunda are different than those of the interior. Outside, only two-thirds of the dome are perceived. The dome is made of solid concrete, made up of self-supporting horizontal rings. These rings were being built by overlapping different layers, forming a continuous and unique body. As the self-supporting rings are promoted, their thickness is reduced. The construction system of the Pantheon, both its technology, its scale and the very conception of the building, is the result of all previous architectural exercises in ancient Rome. The presence of the great oculus lines the loads in the upper part of the vault. Concrete is decreasing in weight as it rises in height. In this way, the necessary stability in the distribution of weights is achieved. Embiffed in the cylindrical wall a series of semicircular arches, corresponding to each of the etcetras, have the function of unloading the weight of the dome. Due to Roman construction techniques, the dome has been able to withstand almost two millennia without interventions or reinforcements. In this work, you can perceive the value of the interior space as a new formal manipulation of architecture. Space to the interior of the Pantheon loses the ethereal characteristic that has by definition, and it materializes, is enclosed, is confined. The building materializes in architecture, also composed of space. Light is not only visible in the luminous particles that are projected on the ground, but we can hear it and touch it. Although we are always spectators, inside the Pantheon, the user is simply a spectator. The building represents itself. It is enveloping to the point that any direction is main, any point of view is good, and a vision is all visions. It is a complex space, but not complicated, articulated and beautiful. A new use of light is discovered, in such a way that this is not only an energetic manifestation, but it acquires figurative values becoming another element of architecture. An elaborate set of proportions, scale, materials, techniques, geometry, meanings is presented to the viewer. The forefulness of its scale and magnificence, as well as its state of conservation, the richness of its history and meanings make the Pantheon exert a perpetual fascination. It acquires the symbolic value of serving as a representation of the city, and even as the time of the Western architecture. The Pantheon, for its connotations with its emblematic past, for its intrinsic characteristics, for its centralized space, 
the manipulated and variable lining and its geometrically pure physical limits becomes a single motor capable of generating spatial sensations. If you like the video, please do hit that thumbs up and share it. Don't forget to subscribe and press the bell button. Thank you for watching and see you next time.